Hey, it's Del Larson. Welcome to the newest EDM production tutorial. I believe this is the eighth one. Um, yeah. And today I want to talk about how to build up your perfect Ableton user library. So as you may know, you can build up a user library in Ableton Live. So for example, if you create some synth presets or even audio effect chains, you can create them, uh, you can save them to use them later into your user library. Now, there is a very cool feature in Ableton Live called .alc files, and these are previewable ALC files, previewable clips. So I made this drum loop here using only one shots in a drum rack. So as you can see, I loaded only drum one shots here, I mean, it's only one shots here. As you can see, no loops, but of course, if you want, you can drop in loops here because, you know, uh, simpler yeah, Simpler can use and can read loops too. Um, so it will always stay in sync and in tempo because you can use warp marker in these loops in Simpler and Simpler can read that. So anyway, I use only one shots here and this is how it sounds. So what if I want to save this full clip with all its ingredients like with the one shots and with the drum racks effects and everything but before we jump into it let me encourage you to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to receive notifications whenever i upload new videos i upload synthesize sunday tutorials on every sunday edm production tutorials on every wednesday and song feedback sessions on every friday so if you don't want to miss any of these smash those buttons for good how you can do it is very very simple because if you go to your user library, you can see it here. You can create your own folder structure. What I made here, I created let's synthesize folder, basses, drums, scrolls, etc. So you can create a very, very nice and custom folder for your sounds. I have a drums here. So what you can do and what you want to do is grab the MIDI and just drop it in. Live will ask you if you want to save the one shots and every containing sample into the user library. Of course you want that because the goal is to create your perfect user library. I always do that, but let's not do this now because I have all the files here, so don't copy. And if I play it back, all I need to do is click on it. It loads a little. So as you can see, it plays back like a regular MIDI file, but also it plays all the instruments with the sounds with it. And you can do it with other stuff. I have a dubstep beat built up the same way. Or that house loop, house top loop, what uh, I showed you in the last Synthesize Sunday episode where I made a 909 style hi-hat loop. The cool thing in this, you can create anything and everything really. There is only one thing to you to know, that if you want to make like modulations and stuff, you want to add the modulation in not the arrangement mode, but the session mode. So you want to double click on the MIDI clip, go to the automation and you know, find the sounds and find the effects what you want to automate and draw them here like you would do normally. And this is the only way, because if you go to the arrangement view, let me undo this. If you go to the arrangement, like uh, copying the MIDI clip, go into the arrangement view. And uh, if I add a new channel, new automation channel like here. And if you drag the MIDI clip this way, you won't have the automation. So this is a very important thing here. But as I told you before, you can really just, <laughs> it's so cool. You can audition every sound like my neuro basses I made. Like other stuff. Now this is a little interesting one because I made some automations here 
as I told you in the session view, but somehow, you know, um, I experience this problem every now and then, but it's not that important because when you pull it back into a session or even the arrangement view, all the automations come back to life. So this is how it should sound. But when I save it and when I drop it into my user library, uh, I don't know why, it doesn't read it back. And the cool thing in this, if you make a new live set with a default tempo, you know, 1 in 20. Okay. And uh, let's say I want to use a drum loop, like going back to the hybrid trap drum loop, or I have a pex like hybrid trap domination. Let's see. This one, so as you can see, in the tempo I had 160, and if I drop it, live sets the main tempo, the global tempo, to 162. So, this is very, very cool. And you can audition it before you drop it. You know, it's a little slower than than the factory preview because that you know somehow attaches an mp3 file and when you click on the file in the factory library like a preset an operator preset or anything it will play back that mp3 which is uh, attached to that preset but this is not the case here how it works is it really plays back the full stuff like you would do it in live in a session or in a project so this works like the same this is why it's a little slower especially if you want to load back a very long session or an effects chain or something but it is so cool so awesome you have everything here even the samples and what i do here is i use a cloud service to automatically back up my user library. So this is very cool stuff because I remember I've been doing this for like years that when I make a sample pack or I make a project or anything, I always, you know, keep everything in the project. But uh, what I changed is I put everything into the user library, like every preset. I don't even save serum.fxps. I only save the full preset. I mean, I, I save the full preset with everything in it, with the effects, with the midis and stuff. And I put it into my user library. So this is very good because you have everything at one place. And when I back up it using a cloud service, anything can happen. I can always call it back and I always bring it back. So this is a very, very safe way and uh, you know you will always have your user library and and the best thing in this that uh, these alc files are not big so my my user library is not more than like half gigabytes or something one 500 megabytes because i use only one shot this user library is not that big so i don't recommend you to use very long loops i have you know i see no reason to do that but your synth presets uh, even if you have a project file which contains very cool sounds you want to use later you don't need to you know save every synth instruments presets and stuff you can just drop the midi into your user library and ableton live will save it as an alc file which you can always like audition back before you want to use so it is an awesome awesome stuff this is why i love ableton i don't think i will ever switch to another daw um, but i'm still interested in studio one three but i don't think i will ever switch so i recommend you to do this because you know it just speeds up your workflow like crazy so uh, i hope you enjoyed this little tip a production tip uh, i was that larson and see you guys next time